this. The cake pop eating contest. Somebody said there's no way I can go up against you, and I was like, oh, you don't know. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> hey, I know the 4th of July has come and gone for many, but the fireworks are now over. That's right. The sky's still full of beauties, though, and luckily this month, uh, this time, it's our cloud of the month. Yeah, it's called the Asperatus uh, or Asperitas cloud, <laughs> and it is getting major recognition. Joining us this morning is Gavin uh, Printer Penny, founder of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Thanks for joining us this morning. And this is a new cloud classification to come out of your society. Tell us how it came to be and where it could be soon be featured. Well, Paul, it came from members of the Cloud Appreciation Society sending in photographs, uh, which they do from all over the world. And some came in about uh, 2006, I think it was, from Iowa in the States. And they were of these weird, wavy, contorted cloud formations. And there's a name for wavy clouds, undulatus. But these seemed different. They seemed unusual. And I wasn't quite sure what to call them. Well, long story short, a few after a few years of seeing these clouds, every now and then, I proposed maybe we need a new classification of cloud, maybe we need a new name for these clouds. And they're just right now being accepted as a new type, a new classification of cloud by the World Meteorological Organization, and they're going to be called Asperitas clouds. Oh, so my, my submission of waterbed cloud, because <laughs> it, it does, it looks like the yeah. rolling, very cool. What uh, makes this cloud so special? Well, it would have to be a waterbed during an earthquake. Yes, right? yeah. <laughs> true. <laughs> because they are not just regular calm waves. They are going crazy, these waves. And, you know, one of the special things about it is that they have um, a distinctive appearance, which is different from the normal undulatus cloud. They seem to be associated with storm activity, although it's not completely certain when you see one that you're going to have a downpour. But they certainly appear in and around storms often. And you see some great ones in the States. You know, Great Plains in the States, where you have these massive storms, you can see fantastic examples of the Asperitas cloud. So, Gavin, I mean, clouds have been around forever. When was the last time there was an actual new uh, type of cloud designated? Well, actually, it was 1951 that there was a new classification of cloud. And, you know, for a classification to become official, it has to appear in this thing, this book, called the International Cloud Atlas. So, look, here we have... Um, uh, an example of the latest edition of it, but this was like from the 80s. Uh, here's one from 1910. 1910, it shows, you can see 1910 there, it shows the different types. You have these photographs. Well, these are early kind of hand-touched photographs of the cloud types. To be official, a cloud's got to be in that, and the World Meteorological Organization are putting together a new edition of this cloud type. So that's why it's suddenly become possible for there to be a new classification. All right, there you heard it. Everybody, you need to order the new atlas so you have all those clouds. Hey, you guys are launching a photo contest to find the best image of an asparagus cloud. How can our viewers get in on the fun if they're spotting them in their area? Well, if you see one of these clouds, um, take a photograph, go to the Cloud Appreciation Society website, and you'll see this competition. Now, it is a competition with the nerdiest, geekiest prize in the world. The winning uh, photograph gets to appear in the International Cloud Atlas as the awesome. reference. Love Fantastic. it. Gavin Preter Penny, thanks for joining us. He's the founder of the Cloud Appreciation Society. Go join. Great weekend.